Hey guys, welcome to the TaylorMade Tour trailer here at the Wells Fargo Championship. My name is Chris Trott. Today, it's Rory McIlroy's birthday. I'm gonna build him a lob wedge, a mill grind two TaylorMade lob wedge, and I'm gonna take you through the process. By the time we get here and things start, I already have an order written up is exactly to spec as to what Rory McIlroy plays. He doesn't change spec on his golf clubs very often, so we happen to know exactly where he is, what he's playing. End of grip is a key component here. And whenever you're building wedges, before we get into cutting and getting things exactly right, you need to make sure the lie angle is somewhere near what would be deemed as tour standard. Rory plays 63 and a half. That is half a degree flatter than what would be again. And I lose it, use it loosely, but tour standard. That's important because length, I can't go away from where these guys are. When you're building lob wedges, or any club for that matter, it's usually to match something in the set or marry into the set. So you have to have everything bang on and ready to rock and roll. And that brings me to Rory's wedges in particular. We've got mill grind twos and high toes sitting right here. Rory has his labeled up, good to go. That order is a 60 and it's in Rory's standard 60 low bounce 08. Let's talk about bounce for a second here. Low bounce on these wedges is gonna be perfect for the golf course here at Quail Hollow. I've been out there this morning, I've had a look at it, the way the turf is. I know it was very dry here a while ago and it actually burnt out some of the Bermuda grass. So this low bounce is gonna enable him to really control the low point, nip it off the surface, get the spin he's gonna need and the control he's gonna need around this golf course. Obviously a golf club needs a golf shaft. Let's move this way. We can get into the perfect golf shafts for Rory. They're already pulled one side for him. The wedge goes in at 37 raw, and it's a Project X 6.5. That is stout, very strong. He plays that pretty much throughout his set. He will counteract that with more weight in the head, which in turn, when this is built, is gonna enable him to feel the head. But let's tip grind, because you're gonna need to make this abrasive before, so that the epoxy will hold. Simple as that. It's important to get swing weight. I'm gonna pop that in there. It will come out. There's no epoxy at this stage, and we need to feral set this wedge. So, against your plate, little push down, weight goes in. all the way home. Then you are now ready to place the club on to measure the length. You need a Sharpie pen, crucial piece of equipment on all the trailers. Rory McIlroy plays a tall velvet full cord, 58 round. That's the grip he plays. I know that grip has an eighth on the end of it. When we order these golf clubs, we either end, order them cut length or we order them end of grip. So 35 and a half, I'm gonna take an eighth off to enable me, when it's finished, it ends up at 35 and a half. Loosen her up, all good. Cut on the line. Get rid of the burr, make it nice and flat, job done. That should be the end of our cutting process. Rory McIlroy plays one plus one on the tapes. We have one tape that is two-sided sticky, okay? Two-sided sticky on that, and we have one that is masking. They have a different weight to them, and they also have a different width to them. So when it comes to putting them on, which I'm gonna go through what's called a dry build, and the reason I'm gonna do the dry build all comes back to weight, okay? I have to get the right weight on this. So I want to put the tapes on before I go ahead and weight the head. In, ready to rock and roll, tall velvet, full cord, 58 round. Says it on the label. You also check, just to make 100% sure, hold it up to the light if needs be, this is a round. But I just want to make sure this is going on. One of the best players in the world's golf bag. We don't need any mistakes coming in. That's what we pride ourselves on here at TaylorMade. So, again, 
dry build. I'm looking for the distance this grip tape's gonna go. That's why you see guys, when they build this, they hold it up against the vise. I know roughly there. Let's pull ourselves one masking, get the length down the grip. At TaylorMade, we go with, what is it, inch and a half width tape, and we wrap it round. Some of the old school guys wouldn't do that, but you gotta make sure it goes on nice and flat. At this point, you can get ridges in there. We don't want that. The second piece is gonna be the double-sided. You've got a seam that goes down your masking tape. So, in order to cover that up, I don't want ridges. Rub your thumb down the seam, wrap it round with your palm. You can see I've done this a few thousand times. Use the butt end, a little bit of excess, cut it off. That now is our dry grip. We are in a stage where we're getting close to weight this thing. McElroy's at D6. With no grip on that, you can roughly allow 10 swing weights. How I weight this is going to impact how the club feels. It's important. That's why I'm walking around with this piece of grip now because I want to make sure it's right. I'm going to put it on and actually physically measure it. I know in there I've got a nine gram weight. So I now know if I come down, it's at D5. So I'd say there's no epoxy in there yet, but I'm going to make some room to go. Not worried that the grip's fallen off. You see that the weight's here? I told you this was a nine. I'm going to make room now to go in for a 10 up here. Grab that out, pop it into our port. Again, I'm going half a swing weight potentially for the epoxy, just to check. So this now needs to be with the grip sat on top. I want to see it come in. D5 and a half, D5 and a quarter, D5 and a half. I'm good with that. So let's get over to our gluing station. This is exclusive to TaylorMade. We pride ourselves on this. It's a curing cell. It all looks very fancy. The glue has been sat here for a while with all the builds we've had in the afternoon. I'm gonna dump my weight out in there, make sure that gets some epoxy on it. Two part black, one part honey. Everything is measured on the electronic scales. Then we use quick center. Quick center is important because it makes sure that the golf shaft goes into the actual center when this thing is put into the golf club. You want that, we're dealing with the best players in the world. You don't want a golf shaft that's slightly off center. That just wouldn't be cool at all. Little bit of epoxy in there or enough that I can feel it sticking. Again, for good luck and habit. Everyone on here has their habits. Maybe banging that on the plate is one of mine, but that's in there pretty good. Line up the graphics, Kushti. Little bit of blue rag just to get off any excess first before I put it into the curing cell. Two minutes 45, 345 degrees. Line her up, insecure. Now you raise this up, bring it down. I'm gonna take it where all the glue is. Lock her in tight. Put the timer on. Okay, so two minutes 45. Let's get back into this station. So the grip has still got some tack to it. Um, we're all good there. Into the clamp. Now when you're putting this on, you can feel, remember I mentioned that eighth of an inch cap? You can feel the grip go into that and it sits in the housing. This now will be perfectly 35 and a half end of grip because I've taken that into the account. Flip the club upside down, make sure that the graphic on the Golf Pride goes down the golf shaft so I've got everything lining up, making this for the best players in the world at the end of the day. Got to make sure it's perfect. Turn this on, literally just going to spin it to get your ferrule looking perfect. This is about the only place everything can go horribly wrong, but of course it hasn't, which is great. Flip that off, fold up that, pop the acetone. You don't want it to evaporate. That's why we always put the card on top, just to make it look great, because it's his birthday. Bang. Rory's 59 on the loft. Just check myself there. He's 59 on the loft. So get the grooves level in the machine, tighten it up, 
I always use the analog. That's where we're going today. 63, this one, so I've got to go half up, loft on the money. So half a degree up into this golf club, slide it over that ferrule, half up. Again, you can feel it in your hands. You've got the experience of working with these golf clubs. Check that everything is good, not moved. Bang on, check that, perfect. There's my half a degree. This is now ready to go out on the tour. It'll be dry, that glue, it dries really quickly due to the curing cell. I did say I wouldn't let you down and wipe down the uh, fingerprints on here, but that is how, in a nutshell, we build the wedges for the best players in the world. We will tag that, bag it, and get it out of here. Good luck, Rory McIlroy, this week. We'll all be rooting for you. Wish you all the best.